welcome everybody um, to this webinar, um, Help Small Businesses Thrive with a Shop Local Program. My name is Barry Foster. I'm a principal and managing director with the HDL Companies. I manage our um, Econ Solutions division, and we also have uh, Don Novitsky, who is the CEO with YIFTI. Um, Don and I have done a couple of these webinars over the last uh, year or so, and so I'm um, happy to, to share some of our insight and, and, um, and do it again with you folks. So we're going to um, do a kind of a quick a brief update on, on ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act, and then we're going to um, Don's going to spend some time talking about uh, providing an overview of the UFD community um, e-gift card program. Talk about um, how you can use that uh, that value with some ARPA dollars um, to get a return on your investment um, for for this kind of program. And then we're going to uh, Don's going to spend a lot of time talking about some case studies that we've um, we have on some um, some cities and programs that we work together on. And then we're going to finish up with some questions and answers. Um, so excited to, to do this today, and, and uh, there's a lot of, I think, really useful and, and uh, important information that we want to get out to everybody to talk about this this program. Just kind of uh, a little bit about HDL and, and um, our company, our division. Uh, we just celebrated our, our 40th anniversary in, um, in April, and um, we uh, we serve lots and lots of, of, of uh, clients. Um, over 700 local government clients um, and so we've been doing this for a long long time and and we're the leader really in sales tax in, in california but we've uh, branched out into other um, states in the united states we're 100 percent employee owned company so the employees own the company it's an esop company um, in 2014 we established the hdl econ solutions division to help uh, uh, with economic development related programs and services to help better serve our local governments um, in the last uh, nine years, we've uh, we've worked with 185 local governments. Most of those have been cities, um, and then we we started doing um, a lot of uh, American Rescue Plan um, Act support with cities, and then we branched off into doing the, the shop local digital gift card programs about a year and a half ago, um, and uh, we've done 15 of those so far. But just a, a brief overview on on ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, it, it really it, it was it was a massive uh, federal stimulus program, 1.9 trillion dollars, um, and um, of that, 350 uh, billion dollars um, were specifically for state and local governments to help with the recovery from the pandemic. Um, and so it, it was a combination of you got, you got a direct allocation from the federal, and every city and town. Um, in the United States got an allocation. So um, if you were a, a large city over 50,000, um, you got it directly from the federal government. If you're a small city under $50,000, 50,000 50, population, um, you got it directly from the state. And um, it, it really has been um, an important stimulus fund um, for cities and local governments to go ahead and fund just a variety of things to help with recovery from the pandemic. Um, one of the important things to know here, I, I think probably that um, you've, you've known that um, there's been some some talk about, um, and we got a, a lot of um, interest from cities about the federal government clawing back some unspent um, ARPA dollars. Um, no need to fear that. Um, they, the feds did take back um, some unspent federal ARPA dollars, um, but didn't touch and, and aren't looking to do anything in terms of um, the state and local um, funds, so that they're, they're safe. Um, if you still have you know, unallocated or unspent ARPA dollars, so you've got until the end of uh, 2024 to allocate your your funds, and you've got till the end of 2026 to go ahead and spend those. A lot of small cities took the option of just taking um, uh, general revenue lost and moved it directly to their general fund. Um, so if you if you've done that as a small city, um, you can use some of those funds to help fund your program. If not, if you still have ARPA funds, you can look to to go ahead and, and um, spend some of those dollars with the shop local digital gift card program. Again, we've um, we've done uh, 15 of these that so we partnered with UFD, and and um, all of them have been really successful. Some some have been you know, hugely successful in terms of of what they've been able to do, but but all of them in their own way um, have been really important to help stimulate um, small businesses. And um, as, a, as a company, we do a lot of sales tax work 
And um, so we've seen that that vast majority of cities have bounced back to pre-pandemic in terms of sales tax revenue. Um, but that's not the kind of the true indicator of, of really the, the health of the economy. Small businesses especially um, are not back to pre-pandemic in terms of cash flow and margins, especially restaurants. You know, it's, it's hard to find labor. It costs them more for labor. Uh, all their products and services that they have for restaurants have gone up. And they, if you've gone out to restaurants, you've seen that the prices have gone up, but they, they still aren't getting um, um, those those proper returns and margins, and so um, they're still struggling. And and um, it, with the with the economy, there's some uncertainty with the economy, whether there's going to be a recession or whatever else. I think it now is um, a time more important than ever to be looking at. Um, really helping your independent small owned businesses doing a shop local digital gift card program um, is is a it's a unique and key way to go ahead and help your small businesses and keep those dollars local all these 15 um, communities that we've done work with and we're currently doing work in uh, with active programs in nine of these um, that they've again they, and some most of these have done multiple rounds of funding um, to go ahead and, and just you know make sure that people are keeping those dollars local and shopping local. It's, that's that's really important now. And it's going to be really important in the next year or so, um, depending on what happens with the economy. Um, I think it's it's a it's a it's it's a local stimulus that you're able to help your small businesses. Um, so HDL partnered up with with uh, with Yifty, and so we work really well together. And um, so we can go in and really help manage your program for you, if the, um, if you want to do that. We can we can help um, formulate it, uh, and then implement it, and then manage it and, and provide the, the administrative oversight for it. We can identify the appropriate level of funding, whether it's coming from ARPA and you have that directly, or or you you move to your uh, your revenue loss to the general fund, um, and fund it through the general fund. Um, we can identify the businesses that that um, would be best for your community to, to participate in this program. We can work with your local chamber of commerce to develop a business contact list. We uh, work with the, with the YIPTI to go ahead and and set up that up with the merchants. Uh, we can help brand it with custom graphics that really is unique um, and fits your community. And then we can act as this, that single point of contact for business owners. Um, if there's any questions, um, and again, we've done this in a number of places, and um, we kind of have quickly understood what works and what doesn't work, and but we want to make it unique to your community. And then we can monitor and and, um, and provide you with reports on gift card sales and and all that. So I'm gonna turn it over to Donna, who's gonna talk to you about who YIPTI is and and really how their program works. All right, thank you, Barry. Um, so hello everybody and welcome to the webinar. It's exciting to be here and talk to you. Um, first of all, I wanna answer the question, who is YIFTI? Um, because you, some of you may not have heard of us yet. We are all about keeping local dollars local. The company has been in business for over 10 years and we've been focused on working with local shops and restaurants uh, throughout the country. We have, we have a product that is called a community card. Uh, we're a technology company. We provide the technology platform for the community card. We handle all the financials and the money transfer, and we have a really awesome customer support department to support all our communities out there. So um, I'm one of the co-founders of the company, and when we founded it, it was just uh, 10 years ago, it was all about how can we help the local shops and restaurants in our communities, because these are the businesses that are providing jobs to uh, people in the community, teenagers in the community, those first jobs, first work experience. They're spending two and a half times what larger businesses are spending to support community programs. It's the soccer team and the little league and the grade school and the brownie troops. Uh, it's the small businesses that are providing the funding to support those programs to the tune of two and a half times what bigger companies spend. And uh, as Barry mentioned, all the sales tax from local businesses goes to fueling the company, the school or the, con the community, the schools, the roads, the parks, et cetera. So um, really kind of a no brainer. How can we help them in their quest? 10 years ago, it was 
how do we compete with all the online businesses and the national shops and restaurants? And then the pandemic came along and hit the smaller businesses even harder. Next slide. So um, a lot of us feel like, okay, this pandemic thing is under control now, and hopefully it really is. Uh, but the small businesses are still struggling, as Barry said, not only re with recovery from the pandemic, but they're having a uh, hard time finding employees. Not only are they trying to get people to come back into their shops and restaurants to do their jobs, but now they have the competition of gig workers and the flexibility of gig work. Um, they have increased costs to do business. The thing about this slide that I really didn't know until I started researching this is for the last recession in 2008 and 2009, it took over six years to recover. So this is not a sprint, it's a marathon. And what um, what we're gonna talk about is something that can just, it's not a one-time thing, it's not just a recovery program, it's a long-standing program that will help drive businesses, uh, business into your shops and restaurants. So um, the program, as I mentioned, is called a community card. What you see on the right here are examples of community cards in the, some of the communities that we worked with uh, HDL on. All of these are different programs. As you can see, you get to have your own branding. It's all about you. It's not about YIFTI. Uh, and today we're in over 500 communities all over the U.S. in 48 states. Since uh, the pandemic began in 2020, we've kept over $50 million of revenue local to main streets across the country. Um, importantly, this program is free for you to set up and there are no ongoing subscription fees whatsoever. It's free to the merchants to participate. It's super easy to roll out, especially with HDL's help. You can roll this program out in three or four weeks and any merchants can participate. There's no special equipment required, no integration with a point of sale, super easy to get it up and running. So here's an example of one of the cities we worked in with HDL, it's called Canyon Lake. Um, so the program is an all digital program. So people would come to this webpage that you see on the slide here. You'll have your own branded version of that with your background image, your logo, your uh, card, whatever you want it to look like, whatever you want to name it. So it's all about you, it's not about us. And people would come to this page to buy cards. So they would just click on the choose any gift card amount link there and go through a process to purchase a card by, and then email it or print it um, to give, up, give to whoever they wanna give it to or for themselves. You might be wondering since the program is free for you uh, to set up and free for the merchants, how does EFD make ends meet? And the answer, you can see it on the very fine print in the bottom of that slide, there's an e-delivery fee that's applied to the purchase of each card. So when someone buys a card, it's like a Fandango movie ticket or something like that. There's a, a small fee applied um, to the purchase. And that is how uh, that covers our uh, program costs. So we don't have to charge you. Uh, okay, so when you send this uh, digital community card, uh, it will be sent uh, usually via email and someone will get a message, click on the email message, open it up and see the first screen here that says Canyon Cash, the card with, with your branded gift card on it. When they are ready to spend the card, they click the bar on the bottom that says view gift voucher and up pops a, the screen on the right, which is going to be a digital gift card that lives on their phone. Uh, they can be printed out if someone wants to take something physical with them, but this is an all digital program, which is how we can do it for uh, minimal cost. So um, as I mentioned, this will work with any point of sale system. So all that the merchants have to do is to be able to process a manual entry MasterCard. So there's no integration with the point of sale, no special devices that the merchant or you have to purchase. The merchants are just going to redeem this. They're going to key in the card number, expiration, and CVV. MasterCard network is immediately going to come back, authorize that transaction so that they know they're going to get paid. And uh, the, the transaction will settle that night with all the rest of their credit card 
transactions. So the mer that's how the merchants are paid. There's no waiting to get paid. There's no management of the money on your end. Uh, the credit card networks and YFD are taking care of all that for you. So it is a MasterCard, but it's not a regular MasterCard. So it only is going to work at the shops and restaurants in your area that you invite to participate. So how that works, you can see on the map on this page that uh, on that initial screen where someone's going to be buying your community card, there's a map and on that map are all little pins for where all the merchants are who are participating in your program. They can also get a printable list of them. They can check out the merchant's website. So at the same time, it, it's promoting the local shops and restaurants. So you invite your merchants to participate, usually through email. And then when you're ready, you send them out through Yifty all uh, activation cards, which are going to look like the um, the MasterCard that you see on the right side of this screen. Only this is a preloaded card with 10 cents on it. When the merchant processes this card on their POS, they are going to get the 10 cents and Yifty is going to get the identifiers for their point of sale. So that way we know who you have authorized to par participate in the program and only the merchants whose uh, POS ID we have will be able to redeem this card. And so we do see people uh, who get uh, these cards and they'll say, oh, it's just a MasterCard. I'm going to use this on Amazon. I'm going to use that this at Walmart or I'm going to use this in the card next door. And they try and it will be declined. That makes us really happy because it forces them to spend this money at the local shops and restaurants in your community. There's no way that it can be spent outside of the merchants that you authorize. Super important. So who's buying these cards? Um, we all think of community cards as something that consumers purchase, and they do. Um, last year, what's shown in this pie chart here, last year in 2022, we saw about 37% of all the purchases go to consumers. And those are consumers who buy them for uh, birthday gifts, holiday gifts, teacher gifts, all kinds, anything you would um, buy any kind of gift card for. A community card is better because you're gonna spend the same money as a gift card, but it's gonna keep it local in your community. The interesting thing though, is we also saw 25% of our business go to bulk purchases. Bulk purchases are kind of a new uh, constituency buying on Main Street uh, because this card enables uh, companies to buy community cards for their employee reward programs, for holiday programs. We saw schools buying them for the teachers on Teacher Appreciation Day. We saw hospitals buying thousands of cards for their essential workers on Essential Worker Day. Um, and city governments buying cards for to thank their employees for their hard work at, uh, in their jobs. Uh, so we also saw a number of government grant programs. So we're running programs for low income families that allow them to spend the funds just at authorized local shops and restaurants. We do, we're doing programs with farmers markets. We're doing a program for after school activity funding for low income families storm cleanup grants, all kinds of creative uses of the program because we have the ability to channel those dollars only to a certain uh, set of merchants. Uh, and for the most part, that's new money coming to Main Street. The last segment here is our sponsored programs. So last year we ran, uh, we've run over a hundred different bonus programs. The funds can come from uh, local sponsors like banks and realtors and things like that. But they we also did, as Barry mentioned, a lot of very large programs with uh, American Rescue Plan Act money. And I'll talk for the next few uh, slides more about how those work. This slide uh, talks about how we can bring new revenue to small businesses. So you may or may not realize the gift card industry is absolutely enormous in the US. This year alone, $185 billion. Before communi community cards, the vast majority of that is going to e-commerce companies and national brands. 
because uh, at least a third of this market are corporate purchases and bulk purchases like we were talking about uh, on the last slide. So what happens is those corporations who are buying them or city governments who are buying them for their employees, they're not gonna buy a gift card for a nail salon or a hairdresser or Joe's Pizza because they don't know if you like that pizza or go to that nail salon but they will buy a community card because the community card at the same time, they're showing their support for the local community and they're also allowing the recipient of that card to make a choice of where they want to spend the that card. And they could spend it at multiple places. So they could go to their favorite coffee shop in town and get a cup of coffee they're going to see immediately the balance change on their digital card so they know how much money is left on their card and then they could go next door and buy something in a boutique so it's a multi-use card and it can just they can just keep spending it at all the places in town until the money's gone on the card so that is a really cool way uh, to spread the money around and which is why it's been particularly attractive um, to do these programs with the ARPA funding. So this is an example of one of those. Uh, as you saw on Barry's slide, we work with them uh, in the city of Lemon Grove. Uh, and this is an example of a promotion that Lemon Grove is running right now. You can see on the slide, it says, so if you're in Le Lemon Grove, if you live anywhere near there, you could go do this right now. Uh, and you'll see that if you buy a $100 card, you're gonna get a free additional $50 card funded by um, the ARPA dollars. So when we run these programs, and we've run over a hundred of them, so we are very familiar with all the ins and outs of them, uh, you're allowed, the city is allowed to specify uh, some rules about the program, which we highly recommend. So in this case for Lemon Grove, there's a maximum of two bonus cards per purchaser. So what that does is it tends to make everybody buy the $100 card so they can max out on the free money. Um, they also in Lemon Grove has, have uh, an expiration date on the bonus cards. So the cards, the $100 card that uh, the consumer pays their own money for, that one doesn't expire as long as uh, they use the card at least once every 12 months and there are no fees on that um, unless the card lies dormant. But uh, the bonus card, since it is not the consumer's money, it's the sponsor's money, ARPA, um, the city in this case, uh, they can set rules and say these cards expire in anywhere from one to 12 months. So Lemon Grove has said 12 months. So the recipient of all these cards, both the purchased ones and the freebies, are going to get reminders every month to redeem your card. You have this many dollars left to make sure that that money gets spent in the community. And when you set a deadline and people know that my money's going to go away at the end of a certain period of time, that motivates them to get that money in circulation sooner rather than later. Hey, Donna, yeah. can I just mention one thing about Lemon Grove and, and most, almost everybody that we've worked with uh, with you is typically we, we, we recommend that you start off with a, with your bonus card for buy one, get one free um, in, in the first phase. And, and, and you we recommend that because um, you're really trying to, to build that brand awareness. You're trying to provide that maximum incentive for people to be part of this program. And so and then you, you can you can do a first phase where you're, you're doing that matching buy one get one and then you can look to do multiple phases and then you can you can ratchet it down as lemon grove did to where it might be you know buy, buy 25 and get 15 free or, or buy 25 and get 10 free you can you can kind of mix and match those uh, but 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 we found it it's it's really important to to create that brand awareness and kick it off right and so um, we we highly advocate doing that buy one get one in that at least a first phase to to really kick it off right and build up the brand awareness and then you can kind of ratchet it down over time. Yeah, exactly. So here's an example of that. Um, so Lemon Grove in their phase one, which ran from November last year through April this year, allocated two hundred thousand dollars in bonus dollars, uh, and that was a hundred percent match. So um, that sold out in April and they liked it so much, they said, let's go with a phase two, 
We'll put in another 70,000. That program is what you see ongoing today. Um, and you can see uh, to date, the full 200K of ARPA has been distributed. Consumers have purchased slightly more that to, than that to, to match, to get their 100% match. And what that does is it more than doubles the amount of money available for the merchants in town. So you're getting a 2.1 times multiplier on the ARPA dollars. And we've seen those, even though there's a whole year, people have a whole year to redeem those bonus bucks. Most of this money has already been redeemed and is in, in the hands of those merchants. So we also see uh, people when they spend their cards, they typically spend more than the card. How many of you have ever just kept it exactly to the amount of money on your card? You tend to go a little bit over on average, it's around 30%. So these numbers don't reflect that uh, at all. So there's actually a higher return uh, ROI than, than what you're seeing here. The other thing that we see with this program is because the, uh, they got this bonus money and there's a bunch of new merchants on this card that they may not have visited yet, they'll try new merchants. So about 51% of the card holders will go out and try someplace new with their bonus bucks or the card that they purchased. So it spreads the money around in the community to different merchants. And that's that's really important to note is that is that a lot of people are trying new places that they typically wouldn't try because they're part of the program. And so, again, you're trying to really stimulate and, and keep those dollars local. So I see a question here about um, state law that allow uh, about gift cards expiring. So the answer is um, the cards that people purchase with their own money don't expire uh, as long as they use them once every 12 months but the cards that the city is purchasing with the ARPA dollars or the sponsors dollars, those can expire because they're considered promotional. So uh, there's not an issue with cards expiring and that expiration date on the bonus cards encourages the funds to get in circulation sooner. So we always recommend that you do that. Uh, so this is a smaller program, I, um, City of Angels Camp. So one of the cool things is this program the community card program can scale up for larger cities. It can scale down for smaller cities. You can have 20 merchants on the program. You can have almost a thousand merchants on the program. So there's not really a limit to how many merchants can participate. Usually we see somewhere around uh, 50 to 100 merchants in a program, but it can be smaller or larger than that. So in Angels Camp, it's a small city, as you can see, population 4,000. They allocated 25,000 to their first round last November, and that was 100% match, and it sold out in three days. So they did a great job of promoting this. People were super excited about it, and it just went like that. Um, so they immediately followed that up with another 25,000 and the terms of that offer are what you see here, the 50% match. So what we see so far is that 32,000 of the total 50 has been distributed, 45 has been purchased, delivering 77,000 of value for the merchants. And uh, about 83% of that 77,000 has already been redeemed in the merchant stores and in Angel's Camp right now, we have about 30 merchants. Yeah, I think it's really important. Like Angel Camp came to us and said, you know, we think maybe we're too small to do this. And, and you know, we, we said, no, we don't think so. And so I think the nice thing about this program is you can really customize it to fit your community. It, it, this works in very small cities like Angel's Camp. It, it works in kind of more small to medium sized cities and it can work in larger cities. And, and so in fact, a lot of those uh, small to medium sized cities um, have had the had the most success. And so we're, we're going to talk about some more that like Lake Forest and Upland that that really have been um, really successful. OK, I see a question over here. Is the way, there a way to incorporate local um, online only retailers? Great question. Um, so it is possible to enable your merchants if you want to authorize them to uh, enable their e-commerce sites to take the this your community card, to accept your community card. So uh, the program can be in store or it can be online, but you have to authorize that, it's up to you. So that's your choice, whether you want to 
drive the foot traffic or not. And I'll just say that most most cities, especially city council members, want to do um, the brick and mortar, um, and, and they want and they want to have it um, be those local businesses. Um, so, but but again, you can customize it to, to whatever way you want to do. But our experience, having worked with 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 a number of cities, is council members especially, um, really want to have that brick and mortar. They want they want to create that trip, those trips and traffic. OK, I see another great question over here. If a small business has locations in neighboring cities, can you limit it to only the location in your one city? The answer is yes. So the card is only going to work at the specific locations that you authorize. So even if it's uh, the same brand, same name, if it's in a different city, it's not going to work there. OK, yeah, I'll just point out that and, and th this is not a program for um, for the Walmarts and for the Costco's that this is independent small businesses and that's and that's really what it's intended for. Um, we, we wouldn't even be able to get a corporate approval for somebody like Costco or Walmart or whatever else, but this is for small independent owned businesses. Um, it, it could be a franchisee that maybe has a couple different locations, but again, that franchise, it's only going to be good in that in, in the location in your community if they're participating in the program. It can be used in, in two or three other restaurants that they may have. I'm catching up with some questions here. I know, see another good one from Diane. Uh, do the merchants pay a fee? So the merchants do not pay any fee to EFT. The merchants are going to get the full value of the card that's redeemed in their store, but they do pay their normal MasterCard card not present processing fee. So they do pay that, but it's exactly the same as if they took a phone order or if somebody bought something online, same fee. We are not taking a cut of the cards. The merchants are otherwise, other than the credit card fee, they're getting the full value, just like someone bought it um, over the phone or online. Same, same, uh, same fee. Uh, okay, this is Upland, uh, as Barry mentioned. So we started a program with them in December, just a little bit before the, um, the holidays. Uh, and uh, it, again, it was a match and $100,000 sold out in nine days. So again, boom, like that. So they decided, okay, that was great. Now we got it jump started. Let's do a second program. They allocated back to back with that another 100,000 and decided to spread it out and do a 50% match. So that one um, I believe is still live. Uh, and so if you live near Upland, you can take advantage of that. Uh, and we see so far that 155,000 of the total 200 has been distributed. Over 200,000 um, has been um, in consumer matching has been made because on the 50% match, you're going to see basically 3x that money. So the $100,000 uh, for a 50% match is going to generate a total of $300,000 of business for your stores. So to date, they're at 370. Uh, Eighty-seven percent of that has been redeemed already. And one of the cool things about that, this is that we have driven over a thousand unique shoppers into those local shops and restaurants. That's incredible because those people are discovering new places, trying new places, and really getting to know their uh, their local businesses. And, and you know, Upland was they 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 have loved this program, and so they they came to us right after Thanksgiving and um, said they wanted to do this, and so we we got it approved by their city council at the first council meeting in December, and then we we put the the, the program together in in two weeks, and we rolled it out before Christmas, and um, it was huge, and and so you know, it, it was it was a little bit tough for us to get it going that quickly, but we did it and um, and they really have enjoyed it. It's been a very successful program. And so it's still today. There's 51 merchants there. Um, it's It's been well received and 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 been, um, been a huge for up on. OK, so I see Julie's asking how would it work for those business uh, who are home based like a photography business? Uh, no problem. As long as they can accept a MasterCard, they can participate in the program. So that's up to you to to authorize them. Uh, and then uh, Diane's asking about training materials. So yeah, what we've discovered is you guys wear a lot of hats and are super busy and have a lot of programs you're managing all year round. 
this is all that we do 100% of the time. So we have materials for everything. Um, we have training materials, we have uh, marketing materials, we have social media content, we have draft press releases, we have templates for just about everything. Um, and I always say, if there's something we don't have, tell me and we'll do it for you because uh, somebody else is gonna need it as well. So uh, there's there are videos to help your merchants train their staff. Um, there are one pagers they can post in their break room if they have such a thing. Um, and um, yeah, we also uh, design window clings and table tents and bag stuffers and those kind of things for them. Um, will there be a surcharge involved in the acceptance of the IFTI cards? No, not in purchasing, not in redeeming the cards. They're just going to pay their normal MasterCard fee. There's no surcharge. Um, when the when someone buys the card, uh, they pay an e-delivery fee on that of a dollar and five percent. Now, in most of these programs in the cities, the city has chosen to cover those e-delivery fees. So when people buy cards, they're just paying face value. That's your choice. You don't have to do that, um, but it is an option for you so that uh, consumers are just paying face value for the card. And it's, it's an option that we recommend at least to kick it off and start with that. Okay, this is my grand finale slide. Uh, so this is a um, huge program that we've been working on since December with um, with HDL in Lake Forest. Again, kind of a medium-sized city with 86,000, population of 86,000. And on the left side, you can see what their page looks like that people would go to to buy the card. They allocated last December uh, half a million dollars for a 100% match program. And uh, it sold out in March. And now they just launched uh, last month another uh, $500,000 program. So, so far about half of that second batch has been distributed and we've got a matching set of consumer purchases. So we've driven almost a million and a half dollars into the local community. These have uh, an expiration date of about six months or so. So the first batch are all coming due pretty soon. Uh, and the second ones um, shortly thereafter by the end of this year. Uh, but you can see there's almost a million dollars already in the pockets of the local businesses. And what's coolest about this is uh, there are 76 merchants and over 4,000 unique shoppers that have taken advantage of the program and walked into those stores. Yeah, so, and, and, and this has been this has been huge in, in, in Lake Forest, and we always got, thought it would be a good fit. We, we do a lot of work in Lake Forest. We do a lot of economic development work, and so... Um, we, but it, it, it even exceeded what we thought it was going to do. And so it's something that um, I know their city council has been very, very pleased with um, um, the, the number of merchants that have participated and just the, the way the community and residents have really embraced this program. And it, uh, it continues to do really big things. So question about how we determine unique shoppers. Um, it's literally we have the names of all the purchasers, so it's unique names who have bought cards. So if they bought more than one, they're only going to count as one person on there. So, and then the other question from Paul, a great question, how sustainable is this program? So what you're seeing here are great for kicking off the program and familiarizing the community with it because everybody gets excited about free money. Um, but this is an ongoing program. So especially we see huge pickup uh, at the holiday times, because as you probably know, gift cards are the number one requested gift at the holidays um, because people like to make their own choices. So this allows them to choose from a number of local places. So we do a ton of holiday business. We also do a lot, as you saw before, um, about 25% of the business is corporate, government employee, um, employee, um, rewards programs. So these kinds of things are going on all year round. Um, essential worker day, teacher's day, and just, hey, great job on that um, on that on that project. Here's a hundred dollars to shop local, take your spouse out or whatever. So the it's an ongoing program. You should think of it as an ongoing program. 
it is something that we recommend that you continue um, promoting in the community as part of your shop local programs. Yeah, another city that we worked with was um, was Hercules. We did two rounds of funding with with Yifty, and then um, they came back and they they have a lot of their their major businesses. They're trying to get their employees back that were working remotely, kind of hybrid schedules, and they want to get them back into the, into their into their offices and and uh, and facilities. And, and they um so they're doing a sh a shop local program with restaurants and and so and trying to get. Um, their employees to come back into the office, and so um, we worked with with the UFT on that program. And we just got it approved by um, by their city council in Hercules um, Tuesday, and uh, we're getting ready to roll that out too. So just it's another way that as Donna said that the, these things can continue on um, even after you're not putting any bonus cards and other kinds of things into it. Um, you really want to do that to establish the brand and get it going and get that awareness, and people are used to it. But but these programs can keep going. On and on and on. Uh, Spencer asked to restate the cost of the card purchase. So, Spencer, uh, it's one dollar plus five percent of the face value of the card. So, if they bought a hundred dollar card, it would be six dollars. So, the six dollars goes to EFT. Out of that, we are going to pay the processing cost, the credit card fees, because that person is going to buy it with uh, with a credit card. So we pay that cost up front. You don't, the merchants don't, the merchants have their own uh, fee on redemption. Um, but, and the remaining part of that is what keeps the lights on here at EFT. Okay, just to give you a little bit of summary, a summary of what you've seen. Um, the, what's best about this program is that it's not just a gift, but it's a gift to the residents of your community people who buy the cards, and then it's all also a gift to the merchants themselves, but it's multiplying the value of those uh, of those ARPA dollars or sponsor funds. So just uh, you saw some of the ROI metrics, um, depending on the terms that you choose. If you do 100% match, you're going to see 2x right away. If you do a 50% match, you're going to see 3x. Um, over time, what we've seen in these programs a year later, um, even after the bonus stops, if you look at all the purchases, they're going to be seeing up to eight times the amount of money that you put into the bonus program because people develop habits of, of shopping local and they go back. So um, it gets the people into the shops and restaurants. We typically have a 30% overspend on the cards, so the ROI is higher than these numbers that I'm quoting, but we um, can't really measure that. Uh, and, and the other thing is that 51% of cardholders try new places, so it brings the new places. People are always going to go to the super popular places in town. Those are your trendsetter merchants. You definitely want them on the program. but they'll also try the new boba tea shop or the new nail salon or the new, uh, even a car wash, a bowling alley. We have all everything um, on the program. Overall, we did a survey and see, set, uh, saw that 92% of cardholders prefer shop local cards over national brand cards. So why not just give them what they want? Again, um, this program is it's it's free for merchants. It's it's branded for you and for your community, um, and um, we can put together a program pretty quickly and and um, and get it up and running. We can do it in typically in less than a month. Um, and it, whether you're using ARPA dollars or you've moved your, your revenue loss for ARPA, if you're a small city moves to the general fund. Um, it really is a it's a it's a it's a wise investment on the part of cities um, to do this kind of program. Keep that money local. It um, it really it's it's a it's a high tech way to do a shop local movement, which I think is important now and in the next year or two. And so I, I think everything you can possibly do to to really help um, your small business, independent owned businesses in your community, keep those dollars local, and and then also draw some dollars from from um, people from outside the community. That's really important now and um, and in the future. Um, so with that, um, I don't know, do we have any, any other final questions in the uh, chat? They, there are a couple questions in the chat room. Do we have time to answer that right now? Sure. Uh, I believe the first one is from Spencer. It, he's asking if this product or similar could be used at a prepaid admissions program. 
like a sports um, center? So where it's not going to work is if the tickets are bought through Ticketmaster or something like that, because if you authorize Ticketmaster, they could buy tickets anywhere in the country. If it's a local uh, event place and they're selling tickets there, yes, then you can authorize that. No problem. Um, the second one is from Diane. I think that one was kind of answered, but um, she's asking if the merchants pay any MCA fee. Yeah, so there's no special fee for the program. They're just going to pay their normal MasterCard processing costs. And then the third one is from Elise. It's a um, question is about if the card like this will work for a national retailer. Depends on if the if A, you have to invite them to the program. So if you want them to be in, we do have a few communities that have invited uh, a local franchisee because they consider them part of the community. So usually those franchisees have no problem processing the uh, the activation card that I showed you, that 10 cent prepaid MasterCard. Um, however, some of the big ones like McDonald's or as Barry mentioned, Walmart, um, their headquarters will not allow it. So you, you, you're, you're never going to get you're never get get corporate approval. It's going to it's going to take it's going to take months to get something like that. And and so um, you want to get these programs going. And and again, I think the focus in, in everything that we've done and the vast majority of stuff that Don has done with UFD is really focused on the small independent um, owned businesses. And and, so, and we try to we try to focus on those businesses that really kind of were hurt the worst when the pandemic hit. And are still maybe struggling, and so it's it's the restaurants, it's the boutique retailers, it's the um, the personal services, it's the nail salon, it's the hair, um, it's the it's the day spas, you know, all, it's it's uh, the fitness center, it's you know it's it's the dog grooming, those kinds of things that that I think are are, are important to um, to really help um, stimulate and help them. Um, and again, this is this is not really focused on on the large corporations. I see a question in the chat that I missed before from Paul. Um, he says this all sounds great and would complement our efforts. Um, what are the drawbacks to the performance to the program? Why would we not do this? So great question. Um, it does take effort on your part. So you know it's a partnership. Um, again, the branding is all about you. Most of the local pr um, promotion comes from you. We'll pride, provide you with lots of materials. But the way I see it, it's our job to make you heroes. And so uh, it means you uh, need to help us get the word out in the community. And of course, HDL helps a lot with that as well, recruiting the merchants, um, advising you on terms and whatnot. But, you know, we are it's a partnership, so you need to allocate some time to the program. Yeah, and so as, as Donna said, we can offer the, the turnkey program for you where, where we've done this in a number of places. We know what works, what doesn't work, and so we can help do that. But but if we do that, um, we also need some some um, some support from the city, uh, typically with from the Chamber of Commerce, to um, to help uh, recruit merchants. Uh, we we can help formulate it and set it up and and do a lot of that work. But um, but we need that we need that um, that local touch too. That's that's important. So we need we need a person from the city staff, and and typically a person from the Chamber of Commerce. I think there is one more question um, from Julie. Uh, I, I see believe this one. Um, oh. Someone asked when I missed earlier. Um, someone asked, "Can you isolate specific merchants for specific programs?" Um, so we've done things like restaurant week programs, where we can take a subset of the merchants and put them into a restaurant week card with a bonus program associated uniquely with that. So no problem. We also have the ability to do and to have individual merchants do their own promotion, like use your card in my store, uh, use your community card in my store, and I'll give you a free two for one lattes or yeah. something like that. So we have, yes, we can do specific programs within the construct of community cards with individual merchants. Yeah, and that that is a great question because we've had a lot of merchants that have really customized their program and offered some of the special deals um, that that make it unique for them because they're participating in that program. So there's a lot of a lot of very creative ways you can do that. With that, have a good day. All right, thanks. Thanks for all the Thank great you. questions.